it not when you were inside of the room, when you were outside. When I went outside. You, with I with was another people talking loud. Yes, we were talking Do you think that you were provoking? No. You know why? Because I thought I was whispering. Uh -huh. In my head, I did not think I was loud, which is so, it's, it's weird because I didn't really, I didn't realize I was being loud yeah. at all. No. But probably unconsciously, yeah. a type of provocation, like, mm. no, see, I knew. <laughs> no. What do probably. you think she, she thinks she is? No. Probably because when I was telling her to come in and she thought I was telling her to move, go out, <laughs> I can see why she thought I was I, I was probably trying to like calm her down and just be like, girl, calm down. And I felt it because I, re I remember my body language that I remember, but talking loud, I didn't I didn't remember. And I said to myself, oh, she has an issue with noise. Yeah, but with that, you are amplified. So you so listen to everything. <laughs> <laughs> in the other side of the land, yeah. you can listen. Yeah. So even if you are being soft, it's loud. It's loud. Yeah, it's mm. very loud. But when you ask, please, can you be loud? And, and you try to, come on, calm down. It's worse. It's, it's like worse, yeah. You are um, disqualifying her. I, I am. Right? I'm dismissing what she's, what she's feeling. So I, you know, we realized this was, this is what was happening. And, you know, we were able to like, have a conversation separately and, and apologize and just you know move on and i think i felt empowered because normally when i when i feel so strongly about something i'm very narrow-minded stubborn you know and because if i feel in my heart i was in love then i was in love right and that's the part that makes you want to... You're, you're going to be triggered by everything <laughs> that you want to work on. It's and super interesting what yeah, happened. It was because very... you were triggered in each other. <laughs> yeah. And then we ended up having a <laughs> tremendous connection, right? Yeah. So it was just like... <laughs> and this is super interesting what you said because you always hate and you're always super bothered in others. What Like, like the thing that you don't like <laughs> in yourself. It's all about mirroring. But we always say this, but we always like, ah, no, mm -hmm. I'm not like this. Yeah. But when you're taking ayahuasca, since it's amplifying all your thoughts and your behaviors and everything, mm -hmm. you really realize that I hate loud people because I hate the noise in my, like, my own nose, right? So mm -hmm. it's really make you like confront... Confront your triggers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I had a similar one in ceremony. I was next to somebody who was restless and having a hard time and fidgety and other things um, and I was bothered by it and it bothered me and and I started thinking yeah I'm making this massive I'm making this massive and it was amplifying everything and it brought me back to your children trigger you why are you getting triggered by your children by such tiny things like making a big deal out of absolutely everything and it became a source of meditation the the restlessness of the person next door was I could go deeper and go what actually is that that's bothering me it was a, a very unexpected insight mm -hmm. but a very clear one very visceral in the moment and which, which one was what was the insight the result so the result the insight the what insight was? is in I need table. to yeah when, when being triggered don't react and have a look at what it is that's triggering you and mm -hmm. just try and step back from it. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Look at what it is. Mm -hmm. Don't just react. That is very common also with music. Mm -hmm. There is, in general, people love the music, but sometimes there is some particular song mm -hmm. that is irritating. <laughs> and you hate that and you, you, are, you start fighting with that. But if you go deeper, you discover, oh, this is the same that I was feeling in the school or with my mm. mother. When you discover the cause, that song don't bother you anymore. Mm. Yeah. So this is the real job we need to do, yeah. to mm. discover the cause of the problem. When you discover the cause, you are not enemies anymore. Yeah. So now you can be friends <laughs> because you are triggering each other trauma. Mm. Mm. Also, do you realize other things? I don't know if you want to talk. So, um, I realized that my 
the Huntington disease that I came for answers here um, was but way before my mom and my grandmother um, and and it happened in Peru I'm not sure exactly where in Peru and trying to I guess travel there it was it was challenging um, I'm still trying to find some answers there while I um, while I'm on this journey but ayahuasca helped me like figure out exactly like you know these spiritual warfares as you explain explained which is you know I'm very spiritual as well um, and we have like a lot of spirituality in my family and there's so much shame behind this I don't understand why so much shame behind a disease that it's not your fault like you know, people don't have a lot of shame. I mean, I'm not saying all people have shame behind cancer or HIV or, you know, like whatever ailment they have. But in my family, they don't talk about it. But was the illness the shame or was the first person who appeared with the shame in the family? I believe it was the first person. Why is the shame? Not because of the illness. The shame probably comes from the act of what happened. I don't know. If the, <clears throat> you know, we don't know. I don't know exactly. Like mistresses and families that weren't supposed to be together, and those things that happen that brings a lot of shame to talking mm. about the disease. And that's. I think I just had that realization. It's together. It's together. Plus, wow. also things that uh, for religious people can be a sin. Mm. That person in your family was a sinner. Wow. It's not only the the illness, mm -hmm. the sin of that person, and this person is a member of my family, so that ah that is the shame. Yeah. She was not that good. That's so funny because we have the families like separated by two last names, and the the Makais are over there, and the Barrasas are over here, and yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wow, you just had a realization on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is awesome. Everyone should do ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I, so now that I, this is no longer my, my shame. I, I used the vacuum, the cosmic vacuum, in the second um, workshop that I found profound, and every I noticed that I, everything that wasn't of mine that before my time I put it in this cosmic uh, vacuum and just whether it was my mom my aunts my uncles everyone my father anyone that I could not carry anymore I put it in the vacuum and I feel so much really what is the vacuum it represents our willpower our willpower yeah. and our willpower is sending all these family members for healing, it's for not healing. that we are yeah. sending them completely <laughs> then to the garden, <laughs> yeah. far away. <laughs> <laughs> the intention is okay. I don't, I don't want to keep carrying them, but they need healing, so yes. I will send them for healing, and then they will have to go to the source, the source, yeah. but not inside of me carrying all this shame, yeah. all these problems. It's so heavy, and it's not mine to carry. Mm. But now I know it's now I know it's mm -hmm. not mine to carry. Mm -hmm. So that's what the second ceremony did for me. It was beautiful. <laughs> so what what has been very special to me is um, the second ceremony after we have uh, gone through the second workshop, the spirit releasement, which is about the idea that we all carry voices and loyalties, but also pain and and feelings inside or with us that do not necessarily belong to us because the because of the way we've grown up and because of the uh, time we and experiences we've had with others and when i um when i traveled in in the second ceremony i could actually travel back and i could see uh, my mother and some of the experiences i i had back then when i was a child together with her and i was i was feeling this anxiety and this this pain that, that I realized that that's actually not mine. That's that's her anxiety around uh, some issues in the world, and I and I know that she had um, a, a problematic childhood, and and that's what 
That's what I realized. Like some of the anxiety that I still carry around with myself is, is shouldn't actually not be mine. Uh, as well as I had that experience with some of the anger I still carry with me, and I realized um, when when I was like walking through memories I had in in my childhood that uh, loads of this anger uh, is my dad's anger, and it's not mine. And <clears throat> I came to realize this, and I I could use the tool, the the, the, the cosmic vacuum, and 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 actually use my willpower and and say that's that's not mine that doesn't belong to me i i can own some pain but that's not the pain i should own and i send it off for for healing and that was very special to the pain you were holding in your body what was creating in your life hmm obstacle what what yeah yeah in which area manifested i, th I think i think i in the past few years i learned i learned to get to know my triggers And I, that I was, would be easily triggered by, let's say, um, dominant male behavior. So if I, if I, um, I'm in a room or if I'm with with men who act dominantly, like with a loud voice or talking a lot, <laughs> dominating the discussion, it would trigger me. <laughs> And I, I knew some sort of that that would be um, has that would ha that has something to do with my childhood. But uh, on ayahuasca, I could actually see where it was coming from i could i could actually re-experience the the memories or the experiences and it was uh some sort of it was painful but at the same time i was able to use my willpower and to to rescue my child that's that's the lingo we we use here to to actually go back to this moment and to to tell the the child that you were that it's okay to feel that way but that doesn't belong to you and mm -hmm. that is just one example that i i, I can share yeah mm -hmm. Did you discover that you were a victim also, like the other? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this was super insightful, um, and I think I have a lot of work to do still um, to be, because I, I I I realize how often I can blame others for what has happened in in a specific moment, and how often I I feel like huh, I did it do correctly i was right i i am right why does th why did this person mess up and i i'm i'm not leaning in uh, in these moments i would not lean into or, or towards the person but sometimes i would actually push it a bit away and this workshop has actually taught me like how like th the mechanics of how i can trap myself and how i can like like trap like feel like like go into this victimhood and keep telling myself oh poor me poor me but that actually doesn't help me to To, um, to face all the challenges that, that the world has to offer and that also doesn't help me to, to, to see the world as a place of opportunities mm -hmm. and that's where I want to go to, that's what I, where I want to land and that's also what I want to do in my job. I, I want to support others to, to grow and to build capacity and what I learned here is I can do that when I do the work myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because once you did the work and you realize how to move on Mm. How to use your own power, then you can teach other people how mm. to do it. Yeah. It will be easier, not only theory. Yeah. Of, of course, that workshop was amazing and with, with insights, but nothing beats the insight that you get in ceremony as well. It's sort of this kind of, they dovetail together really well. Mm. And in ceremony, I was told, it, I was shown, actually shown, it was painful to see, but it was it felt like the right thing to see what you're doing look at what you're doing look at this you're being negative you're being critical you're overthinking you're judging people your use of words all of these things were like lessons coming to me just actually just being shown it and i you know i cried it was hard it was hard lessons but it was good crying because it felt like such a release and it was I felt those lessons viscerally I felt them with every cell of my body um, and they become real in that moment um, those are things you can be told but with ayahuasca it makes you feel them mm. it's very different you said you come here because I am connected I won't I started learning in Peru, in Peru but most of the centers are in Peru yeah That you choose to come to Brazil. Yeah. Mm. I had a, I had a center in Peru and I was like, mm, I'm gonna go to Brazil. She 
She's already connected to her room, so this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so you have both. And my last ceremony was so special to me. Oh my God, it was so special because, um, like, as everyone said, ayahuasca is an amplifier, so it just allowed me to just be present with every like drop, every tree, every sound of nature. We were supposed to connect. The intention was to connect with nature and. And now that I don't, in my head, I think I'm like, oh, I, I like I have plants all around the house. I connect. No. <laughs> but to actually see, you know, being part of nature and swimming for hours, I felt like I swam at least for two hours. Um, and it forced me to just stay still, too. Like, you know, boredom. I had an issue in my head. I'm like, I don't like to be bored no stay right here like stay here and, and then i thought about my daughter like how many times i'm on the phone even though in my head i'm like oh i'm always present but i can do i can i can be more present with her and be present around others and um it was hard because i have so much other things going on um so that's something that i definitely want to continue to work on and um it felt so good after it and the trip didn't i mean i didn't i say the trip it it didn't end until like five six o'clock and i just kept like touching myself and i hardly ever touch myself like consciously <laughs> yeah. um it was it was beautiful it was exactly what i needed <laughs> i had one of the most amazing insights during the ceremony so i've you know i think i've healed a lot of trauma but there is something that really bothers me in my life. I'm, you know, I'm suffering from eating disorder. I have like a um, mental anorexia, meaning that I eat normally, but I feel guilty about everything that I'm eating all the time. And I count everything that I'm eating. And I'm on, I mean, I've been on a diet for, for the past 15 years of my life. It's just the constant, you know, like it's, I'm constantly thinking about it and it's obsessing. And what was really interesting is over the past month, I'm starting to write a lot and I have a lot of ideas in my head all the time. And I was obsessed during the ceremony about not forgetting. So it was like, God, you, you, you can't forget this inside. So I was doing a recap like every 10 minutes. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you lose track of time, but like, Every 10 minutes on, you know, on the ceremony, just saying, okay, these are all the insights you had and like write them down in my head. And it was like, God, you're creating a new disorder. But the very disorder that you, that you have is the eating disorder one, but you don't have to be on a diet. And it was so obvious that I was beating myself up. And I've been doing this for 15 years. But during ayahuasca, it's just like, as if you were talking to yourself and you know when people are telling you very obvious thing, but you're like, yeah, thanks, Stacy. I haven't thought about it. But in that case, it's you talking to yourself and you're just like, of course, why the fuck am I on a diet? It makes no sense. And I could use the tools, which is amazing. And that's why the workshop was so important because as I was saying, they're providing you with, a, with practical tools on how to get rid of bad habits, for instance, or thing that really dragging you down. And so I use this vacuum cleaner, which is of course a metaphor, but like, how do you remove something from yourself? And I could like vacuum the guilt and the illness. And honestly, I mean, I know it's been two days, but we had new meals. And I know that previously I would have counted everything that I've eaten. And, I've, and it occurred to my mind, like, and I was like, but don't think about it. Like, don't, you don't have a shit. And so, you really heal the issue from like just going back to the root cause and you have this kind of amazing realization but it's not like you have i mean in my case i don't have visions right i don't have i don't see i don't know animals or whatever i just talk to myself and it just you just say the truth to, to yourself you can't lie anymore and it's like obvious so so you were addicted to control yeah yeah, totally. Was it but, actually to but not only to control how much food you eated, 
how many calories or whatever is to control in general. In general. Mm -hmm. So the, the addiction is con the control. Mm -hmm. The addiction is the control, and this is what I was telling you like yesterday. It's it was the eating thing, but then it like it becomes the idea of control, and then for sure in five years from now it's gonna become something else. But what I love about ayahuasca and all this place and doing therapy with you in a sense, I know it's not therapy, it's kind of therapy, right? It's <laughs> that you are so self-aware that I know that everything that I've been working on, this retreat, the previous retreat, is really gonna help me like tackle all the new challenges that are gonna come you know, in my life because I know that when you have some pattern, they're kind of doomed to repeat. But thanks to all the tools that, that you are providing us with, we can track them. I would have never thought that my, oh, I need to write, I need to not forget anything that I'm thinking about. I've, I would have never thought that it would be a new disorder, a new obsession, a new control, you know, free action, but it is, and I'm sure there are going to be more. So now I know, I'm looking at myself from a very distant you know, perspective. But also, it's interesting if you can find the obsessors. We talk about that. Yeah. No? Like, if we can separate, you said, no, it's me controlling. I need to control. I need to... Uh, remember this, I need to, so if we just be playful, we separate, okay, it's not me, who can be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talk that in Brazil they call obsessors, like entities that are Obsession. obsessing you, and instead of uh, say, go away, you don't know, don't realize, and you keep feeding them <laughs> with your guilt, with your anger, with your depression, you feed this obsessors and they are sucking you and you are producing the, the energy, the food they need. Mm. Yeah. So in this case it's very clear there are like obsessors but you think it's you. Mm. If you can separate, be playful, okay if it's not me, who are you? When was the first time that you started doing this in, in me? Mm. You said 15 years but probably this is older than 15 years. The real work is when was the first time I started to feel this compulsion mm. to do this or mm. to do that? Because it's a compulsion, I don't have freedom, I have to do it. That is the addiction, I have to do it. And so, when I was very young, I had eczema, but like in my whole body, which is the biggest compulsion that you can have. I think it's one of the biggest, like, you can't just, it's as if you had a million mosquito bites and you can't just control it. and my whole body was in blood you were scratching but my whole body in blood all the time and i was like six months old like maybe a year so i think the very compulsion started like super young and i know that i mean i heard my mom is not gonna watch this <laughs> but i know she's a control freak like like big time and so for sure during the pregnancy and you know every like it comes like it, everything starts during the pregnancy so i'm sure during the pregnancy there was a lot of controlling and you know when i was very very young like first month old and so the compulsion started like to control my like the body or whatever and it's like the the psychosomatic you know, manifestation of it. So it's what's for the eczema and then it's the food and then it's all the thing. But I do think that this obsessor is like the mom wanted to control everything and it's just like replicating it, right? For sure. Yeah, and you can move from one obsession to another different Obvious. in your different periods of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are these ones. When they started. Yeah. And who is this? Us. Who are you? Who are you? I, are you ready to get rid of this? So use your willpower, that in this case we use the tool of the vacuum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's our willpower. I don't want you anymore. I am ready. Definitely. Yeah. So you send for healing. But of mm -hmm. course, if we keep talking, we will be discovering more insights. <laughs> because now you are very clean. Everything mm -hmm. is easier now after these nine days of pure food, uh, healthy, good water, ayahuasca cleansing, okay, you are more receptive now, it's easier. So if we keep talking, we will keep discovering more things. <laughs>
um, anyone else wants to talk about if you discover something specifically in the ayahuasca? I didn't realize it was so... Um, so we're talking about my insights with white people and, and I knew it before I came here because I was doing the work after Black Lives Matter. Um, a lot of that anger came up and I shared with my my um, my family now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the problem was I didn't know where it came from. Like I know like we know institutionally, we know like I live, I live in New York so you don't experience it firsthand. Um, you experience it institutionally for sure, um, but I did not understand where it came from exactly, and I realized in the last ceremony or the, the third ceremony that it came from my mother um, and um, you know, her hate. And, and at a very young age, I took that on along with, um, I took that on and it, it became my own for a while. And um, I think also it, I took that on and it also made me like become like whitewash because I work in an environment where there's only white people. Um, what means whitewash? Meaning like you, you tone yourself down, meaning like you bring, you become more white. Mm -hmm. In your habits, in your exactly. way of exactly, in my way of talking. Oh, yoga! Yeah. Only white people do yoga. You know, like I became an identity that wasn't my own, and it wasn't until Black Lives Matter that I started realizing, oh my gosh, wow, <laughs> that was powerful, and, and I became angry, like very angry, and I just realized that I didn't. I didn't want to be angry, you know, so I did therapy, I looked at therapy, you know, I I have a white therapist who helped me through it, which he was awesome, he's awesome, his name is Bart, from the Netherlands, and, um, and a lot of that anger was like misdirected. Yes, we have systemic racism, you know, that's not, that's something that we've experienced, it's just it, it's hard sometimes to talk about it because it's un-American to talk about race, right? It's un-American to talk about um, our struggles and our, and our prejudice and no one wants to hear someone complain. But, you know, when we talk about the Holocaust, it's open. It's easy for people who are Jewish to talk about it because it's accepted. For us, in order for you to accept that racism happened, you first have to identify that it's an issue, and oftentimes it gets denied. And that's basically what I felt that I had to do working in an office where I'm the only black girl. So um, I realized, I, I had that realization in my third um, ceremony, and I didn't, it was good to know where it came from, but it's not my own. It's, you know, my mother's experience is different than mine. Um, I, I actually empathize with her because she didn't have the resources that I have now and I want to make a change and I want to um, be able to help people that look like myself. Mm -hmm. But what is the, co the consequence of this is like we are perpetuating Yeah, and, so and we are looking for the victimizer. Ah, she is a victimizer because she shoots me. And she's white. Who the hell she thinks she is? Mm. No. For example, and now you can be friends because you realize that they also we're making noise. So it's not. Yeah, that's true. If you don't realize these little things, she will continue being your enemy, and you will continue being pissed off. Yeah, you offended. Yeah. A paranoia kicks in. You know, all of these things kick in, and you and you create a narrative that's just not healthy for you to progress. Or even with myself. Because exactly. probably I will give you an interpretation of something, and if you don't see the same, you can feel offended. The thing is, if when you have this color problem, yes. if it is coming from me, ah, she's trying to offend me. Yeah. If it's coming from another person of your color, ah, no, it's okay, you can take it easier. Yeah. And that is the thing, that we are perpetuating the problem. Yeah. We are so influenced from yeah. our beliefs that we cannot see the other. I agree. I agree. Like I, this experience has taught me to 
see beyond um, see beyond color see beyond systemic see the heart you know because we're here to grow we're humans absolutely yeah that's why we ask at the beginning of the retreat please we don't want to talk about politics religion wars conspiracy because we want to meet each other in a spiritual level mm. so it doesn't matter if we are white or black or yellow it doesn't matter you know, we are all souls that we want to grow and, and feel better exactly I think if you can hold on to that, especially a person of color, and you know, not like a lot of us identify with our religion or our mothers, our daughters, like we have all these things that we identify. But if you can just just separate for a little bit, just to to get the experience, it's gonna be powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I think we 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 yeah. have this at the end of the retreat, no, that we are all a powerful group. Yeah. You have a lot of support yeah. mm -hmm. in this group. Yeah. Yeah. And acceptance because nobody criticizes me. If somebody comes here with this paranoia that what they will think about me is not happening at all. Yeah. And you're saying the worst like the worst part of year, but there's no judgment whatsoever at any point. Yeah. You don't need Maybe. to pretend here. Yeah. Yeah. You are better or Whatever. Or please other people. This is so common. No people need to please what they want me to say. I will say that. Mm -hmm. Have to be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, go on. yeah. No, I was just gonna say that what I think it happens. One of the reasons why we bound so well, yeah. it's because even before judging or color or whatever religion etc. The very first thing that happens is that we present ourselves, we go to the workshop, and we already talk about our traumas. Mm -hmm. And then, by that, we see that we are very equal, mm -hmm. because we have lots of traumas, mm -hmm. similar stuff, I and we see everybody has a different kind of pain and traumas, yes. and that goes beyond everything, religion, or color, or politician, all that bullshit. And when you, you see the pain that you have in someone else's eyes, yeah. That's you there. You are. Yeah. You see, like, you like see spiritual that. level. That's just what you said. Yeah. And then the rest really doesn't matter. But it's yeah. very tricky because if you know in advance that the first workshop is to talk about your biggest trauma, yeah. <laughs> you don't go to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Once happened a long time ago. The participant from South Africa told me, listen, there is no way I can talk in front of people, so I want to talk only with you. <laughs> mm. You know, we are working in groups. It will be fine, you will see. Yeah. And he loved it. Mm. But it's the way you are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No? I don't sit with the lamp and I tell me your trauma <laughs> of your trauma of your life. No? <laughs> we are we know how to move the group and to open the hearts in a safe exactly. way. Yeah. Exactly. We must want this. Like we yeah. want to share, we want to talk about it. That's something that everyone individually has to know in themselves. Yeah. If I want to do that, I want to grow, I want to develop uh, my spiritual side or whatever it is. And when you are here, you give us the tools to exercise, to practice this. And I think it's exactly what happens, like, and it continues to happen afterwards, after the first day, then the second day. I myself, I remember one day that I was in the room with the guys, and it was like a workshop for me. It was <laughs> extremely special to have the guys listening to me, and I started sharing because I started to talk about a few of my traumas and bad things, and they were like, whoa, that's a lot. And they were listening to me, they were talking to me, and... It was so special and then I get to listen to them and talk with them and when you see that someone else has the same kind of pain that you have, it's individual, it's mm -hmm. different, but it's similar somehow. The rest really doesn't matter, mm -hmm. like color, where you're from or how oh, I'm from top country and the other, it's <laughs> okay, yeah. it's just a human being, I'm a human being, you are here to grow, I'm here to grow, it's beautiful, let's do it together, how can I help you, you help me, yeah. and that's, that's it, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah, to here. have a place to do that, it's mm. so mm. special. Yeah, we're here for equanimity, you know. I wanted to share this experience, not doing any proselytism or convincing people, just saying like, oh, I did this, I think it's going to make me a better person. 
And the first question I was asked all the time was like, did you vomit? And I was like, who cares? Like, first of all, no, I did not. And if you look at, I mean, I don't have big data and I would love to run the statistics on this one. But like, we're almost 20 people and out of them, like, three people vomited. Like, it's very few people. Mm. But also, the peop like, people are actually vomiting. It's a purge, right? So it's good. And everyone who purged during the ceremony, first, they never talk about it. Like when we have a sharing, we talk about what was important for us during the ceremony. They're never going to say, oh, and I purged and it was written out. It's a non-existing event. Like it doesn't really matter. But when they do purge, it's a relief because they had to take something out of the body. So. It's a good thing. So I really, I, and I really want to say this, I think ayahuasca has really bad press because you have the, this myth of the shaman in the jungle and the possessed crazy people vomiting and cheering on themselves. That's so far from this. Mm -hmm. That's so far from this. And I'm sure there are some bad places where you're not taken care of, you're overdosing, like here everything is super, everyone has like they're very personal like those at the point that some people were talking like they were they, they wanted to take 35 and Sylvia was saying 32 and they ended up with 33.3 .3. so it's that's <laughs> yeah. this level of perfection right yeah. and i just for sure there are bad experiences but like if you're going in the right place in this place i mean i, I would not go to any other place because everything is perfect you just feel so safe and there is can be there is vomiting but it doesn't matter because this is what you need so i really want to stress this out like you don't care you're doing good to yourself and ayahuasca is not about vomiting and shitting on yourself it's about like healing yourself yeah. so really it's a big relief and then you feel amazing <laughs> liberated <laughs> okay thank you very much would you like to add something no I, I just want to thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, no, Tio. You guys have been phenomenal. Like, phenomenal. And um, I appreciate the love. I will carry this forever in my life. I'm sure I'll be back here with my, my daughter and my family, my friends. Mm. And yeah, people bring the family. <laughs> also, you. You brought your sister for my this retreat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm going to add more people and more people too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. we, we, we'll be a familiar yeah. retreat. Okay, yeah. I am Thank very thankful for you. Uh, I love to meet each of you. And um, thank you for your collaboration. Um, okay, have a good time in Itacare. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.